section uh, of the uh, lumbar cord in a cat, and the bone would be removed from the top in an anesthetized animal, and a microelectrode would be inserted into the spinal cord to record from pain cells. These are cells which receive inputs from the skin uh, through both small diameter fibers and large diameter fibers, uh, and they will synapse on that cell there, which will then send the axon uh, through this arrow up to the brain. So what we basically did was insert a microelectrode down into the spinal cord to record. This is a, a very fine glass microelectrode, and it was we recorded the responses of these cells to pain and recorded it on preamplifiers, oscilloscopes, uh, and computers, and so forth, in order to uh, see uh, what the pain response was like. And we would apply a controlled pain out here on the skin, uh, and we would activate, say, one of these small diameter fibers, which would make the cell uh, respond. We then gave acupuncture uh, at a distance. That is, we didn't stay in the same segment, but rather uh, we would stimulate Hoku, which may be uh, several segments away, or we had other points that we chose from. We have to, we got our points from veterinary analysis uh, and uh, also extrapolating from human points. And so what we basically were able to do was monitor this, the, res the pain response of that cell electrically. This is a single cell, one cell at a time. We could follow a cell for an hour or two. We would give acupuncture and see whether the response was changed uh, by the acupuncture. To make a long story short, um, what we found was that there was a certain Morse code on this cell, which had something to do with pain input, which is coming up the small fiber. And the same cell had another Morse code for touch, which went up the large diameter fiber. So there was two different pain messages on that cell. When we gave acupuncture, nothing happened for about five or ten minutes. But by 20 minutes, the pain response, that is the response that came up with small fibers, was abolished, whereas the touch response that came up the large fibers uh, was completely unchanged. And then if we t stopped needling the animal, uh, this is all under anesthesia, so you can't say we're talking about uh, psychological changes in the animal or anything. If we took the needles out at, say, 20 minutes, the pain response slowly came back. That is, the small diameter type of response slowly came back. Um, it doesn't matter. And, you can, um, and the, the result was uh, that by an hour later, uh, we, we, we obtained a perfectly normal pain response on the small fibers, while all this while nothing had happened to the touch response. It remained normal through the whole procedure. So this had two very interesting qualities. First of all, uh, it, when we discovered this in 1974, uh, it didn't fit any neurophysiological theories because everything that we knew about neurophysiology happened very quickly, within a fraction of a second. This thing took 20 minutes till it began to work, and also took an hour to recover. We didn't have anything like that in neurophysiology. That was the first thing. The other thing that was interesting was it was very similar to the clinical experience. Clinically, you have to prepare a patient for 20 minutes to an hour, to half an hour anyway, before an operation. Uh, and typically, the, the, the pain relief outlasts the operation. You stop treating the patient at the end of the surgery and then send them back to the ward and they're still free of pain. So this uh, delay in onset and this, uh, this after effect is very typical of the clinical story. And thirdly, uh, this was all done under anesthesia, so there was no way you could say it was placebo or psychological or whatever. But we still didn't have any explanation, so we didn't publish it. Uh, mainly because in science, um, unless you understand something, frequently uh, nobody will listen to your phenomenon. Then in 1975, um, endorphins were discovered, and it made logical sense that it would take a while for the endorphins to circulate if they were coming from the pituitary. So we repeated this whole experiment 